So this is the device. This is the device you're going to be using in this lab. It's called a colorimeter. And it works very similarly to the spectro spectrometer that I showed you the other day. In fact, the little um, cuvettes that I used the other day are exactly the same. So this is a cuvette. And this is what you're going to be putting your solutions in. Okay? And there are caps that go on these cuvettes. In fact, I've got one with a cap already on it here. Okay? So here's what you're going to be doing. So uh, you might want to take a few notes, but there are complete instructions at every lab table. Okay? First thing you have to do is calibrate the colorimeter. You have to calibrate the colorimeter. Now, to to, once you calibrate the colorimeter, you don't calibrate it again. You only calibrate it one time. You got it? All right. So you're gonna, what you're going to do is you're going to put uh, at least three quarters of this with uh, distilled water in it. Okay? About three quarters full. You want to rinse it out first. So rinse it a couple of times with distilled water before you, before you fill it. Got it? And you, every, every lab table has got one of these uh, distilled water containers. Now look, the one with the blue top, the one with the blue top, that contains water. It has a red top. Don't put it in here. That's not water. Okay, you'll ruin this cuvette if you put the stuff that's in that red top container in there. Okay, so that you rinse it out a couple times, fill about two quarters, uh, three quarters full with water. If it's a little bit over full, that's fine. It's not a problem if it's a little bit too full. It's a problem if it's not full enough. Got it? All right. Then you want to make sure that this is really clean on the outside. And there are some what are called chem wipes on the middle lab table. Okay, so you take a chem wipe and just Wipe off the outside of it to make sure there are no fingerprints and dust on here because that will affect the results. What's the name of that box that this is called a cuvette. Not that. I'm talking this? Yeah. Colorimeter. Chem wipe. Yeah, it's just a little tissue, but it's, it's one that doesn't scratch. the con pa Regular paper tiles will scratch this. We don't want to do that. They also leave trash on the, on the surface. It's smaller you can't see and these are super clean okay all right so the way you calibrate it is you're going to take and put as i said you're going to put water in the cuvette you're going to put the cuvette in here now the cuvette's got a clear side and it's got a ribbed side the the clear side has to go in the direction the light shines and the light shines in this direction so you want a clear side on this side a clear side on this side and the two rib sides go here that makes sense it'll make sense when you look at it but just in case i'm trying to make sure everybody's kind of Got a heads up here. Close it up. You're going to hold the cap, the um, calibration button down. Hold it down until this red light down here stops flashing. Got it? Then it's calibrated. Nothing else you have to do. When it's calibrated, your computer screen should show an absorbance of either 0, 0, 0. 0. 0.000 or something really, really close to that. All right? Negative 0 0.001, that's, that's not, uh, uh, um, not enough to worry about. That's slightly off of zero, okay? Z uh, positive 0 0.001, that's not enough to worry about. But you're looking for it to say 0 0.000, that's calibrated. Then, you're, then your colorimeter is calibrated. Um, well, let me, actually, before you even calibrate it, you need to make sure it's set on 635 nanometers. And you use these buttons right here to go back and forth, the, the arrows here. You, you switch between these four. Um, wavelengths here. You want to be on 635 for this lab. Okay? So you do that, then you calibrate. Got it? Get it set on the right? M most of them probably are, but if they're not, just make sure they are. Now, in the last lab, you used uh, something called a LabQuest. The temperature probe we used in the last lab was plugged into a LabQuest. This colorimeter is also going to be plugged into the LabQuest. The LabQuest then is going to be plugged into a computer, and the computer has to have a program up on it called Logger Pro. Okay, Logger Pro. You need to make sure that um, Advanced Chemistry Program 17 is loaded up on there. If all you do is start collecting data, it won't do it the right way. And so what you're going to do is on the screen where it says Logger Pro, you'll see a little icon on the top that looks like a file folder, like the file folders you guys did for personal and work, work materials you put in your, um, in your hanging file. Remember that? It was like a little file folder. And you click that file folder, you click on the file folder that says Advanced Chemistry, and then you find number 17, which is Colorimetry. Got it? If you have that program open, then it's ready to go. 
if there's all if there's already numbers on the screen it means that's up there from the last class period you need to reopen it and start over again so you're not using their data yes LabQuest or La Logger Pro? LabQuest is the device this is plugged into. Um, then that LabQuest is plugged into the computer. What's the little things that you log in your information to? Logger Pro. Logger Pro. Logger Pro. There's a spreadsheet function on that Logger Pro. You just type in. Well, it'll, it'll tell you what to do. The instructions tell you what to do. First thing you do is you press collect. And the instructions are on the computer. I'm going to tell you how to do that too. Okay, just hang on. You're going to press collect, and then you're going to press uh, keep for each one of these data points. It tells you what to do. You have to follow the instructions. Okay? All right. I just want to uh, show you what this looks like and how you're going to put your cubette in it. Now, once you've got it calibrated, then you're ready to start collecting data. On the middle lab table are five Erlenmeyer flasks. And those five Erlenmeyer flasks contain five standard solutions that I, I made up for you. Okay? And... Uh, concentration of the solution is written on the side of it. There's one that's a 0.400 molar. That's a capital M as molar. Uh, I think there's one that's 0 0.240 and then 1.160. 1 you just read it. All you got to do is know what it is. Now, the captain of your lab group is the one that has to go retrieve those chemicals from the middle table. Nobody else can leave the lab table. Got it? All right. So, the captain wants to, what you want to do is put a little bit of solution in here, rinse it around a little bit, pour it out, then put in the solution you're going to measure. Got that? All right. So you want to put in, again, about three quarters full, walk back to the lab table, put it in here like this, and then you're going to tell the computer we're ready to keep that data. It'll ask you what the concentration is. You put in the concentration, you're ready to go to the next one. And tell it to, you have to tell it to keep, but I mean, you know, it'll, t it'll tell you what you do on the computer, okay? Got that? All right. It's that simple. You got to do those five things. When you're done, when you're done with those, collecting those five data sets, then there's a button you push on the computer to show you a best fit line. Okay? There's a button on the computer you put, push that will show you a best fit line. Got it? Remember last time you had to draw in a best fit line. Turns out you have to do that here this time too, but here's what I want you to do. Once you've got all your data collected, then you're going to go to a spreadsheet that I've built for you. It's on Google Docs, just like before. works the same way. You can put in your numbers on that spreadsheet. It'll automatically create a graph for you, and that's what you're going to download and save on your flash drive, take it home, print it out, draw in the best fit line, just like we did before. The difference here is you have to interpret from that best fit line. So then after you've done all that, you're ready to test your unknown. Now, the unknowns are on your lab tables. So you're going to do the same thing that you did with the standards. Take out, pour out what's in there, uh, swish a little bit to kind of rinse it out, then put in three quarters uh, of a cuvette in here, put it back in, and all you have to do is read on the computer what it says the absorbance is. Just read it. Put in your notes. The rest of it you do at home. Got all that? All right. As you do the lab, you need to be writing down your procedures in your lab notebook. You have to have procedures in your lab notebook. Got that? Okay. And you have to write down observations as you go along too. Got that? Now you can summarize. So there's a lot of detail written out on the procedures that when you're doing them, you don't need to write all, the, all those down. Because you'll know what, you'll, once you're doing it, it kind of makes sense and you just need a headline for it. So summarize the procedures. Got it? So you know how to calibrate the colorimeter now? Do you have to write all three steps down, or can you just write down calibrate colorimeter? When you get to that step, that's what you're going to do. See what I'm saying? That's what I mean by summarize. Got it? But now you have to know what it means and be able to do Some Somebody else in the class should be able to read your procedures and do this lab without anything else. That's what you need to do. Any questions? All right. The rest of the stuff is on the computer. On the computer... You have the uh, lab officer reporting form. You know what to do with that. We've done it twice, right? Okay. You've got that spreadsheet. Very much like what we did before. You've got that. Now, in this case, uh, you are only putting in the data for your lab group. Every lab group's got their own spreadsheet. Last time, remember, we did it for the whole class, right? This time, everybody's putting in just their data for just their lab group for just their spreadsheet. Got it? 
Okay, make sure you're putting data in on your spreadsheet and not somebody else's. Okay, you have a spreadsheet that says it's second period. You have a yeah, and on the spreadsheet down at the bottom are tabs for each lab group. Make sure you're on the right one. Don't put in data in somebody else's lab group. Got it? All right. So if you are if you've got a sign safety contract in your file, if you have um, you pass the uh, required minimum grade for the safety test and you're dressed properly then you can get started. You're going to choose your own lab groups today because some of you need to be captains, some of you need to be secretaries, some of you need to be safety officers because you've got to do all that in this nine weeks. So once you choose your own, um, I don't know how many people aren't doing the lab yet, but for right now let's say three people at a lab table. If we need four, you check with me first. Got it? You ready to get started? Long pants, closed toed shoes, you know what you got to do, right? All right, go to it, guys.